for this one, in addition to your typical tools, you're also going to need the ellipse guide out of your drafting kit. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's do our always our first step of tape our page down nice and straight along our T square. And then, of course, we'll lay out our border and our title block. There's my triangle. Lost it for a second. Always making sure that you're keeping the triangle flat against the T-square and that your T-square is flat against your drafting board. Always, always, always. And then we'll divvy out our title block. Four, three, two, one and a half. Whoops. Yeah, I wasn't holding my triangle tight enough against the T square and it slipped out on me a little bit. Okay, so for this one, Again, we'll pick somewhere kind of towards the bottom-ish, right-ish of the page, and that's just where we'll project out our three axes. So we'll go out for our depth, our length, and our height. And I'm just going to create a bounding box just based on overall measurements. So I have an overall length of four. So I'll just measure out four inches. I have an overall depth of one and a half. So I'll measure out one and a half. And an overall height of two and a half. So I'll just kind of make those three marks. And then just create a bounding box where I then can use the subtractive method to get the rest of my shape. So I'll just project those lines up to meet, and then where they meet, I'll kind of flip them and flip my triangle around to meet. Let me just get a little bit more eraser on my pencil because I'm going to run out. I know I mentioned it in the tools video, but that's what I love about these pencils is that I, I can extend my eraser out if I need to, which I often do. Okay. And so now I'll just start to kind of carve out some of the pieces out of my front view. So I've got those little kind of ledges knocked in here. Um, they are... Uh, let's see, three quarters of an inch. So I'll measure up three quarters of an inch and in three quarters of an inch. I'll do the same thing on this side. And I'm actually not even going to make that measurement over here. I could, but instead what I'll do is when I put that guide there, since they sit on that same measurement, I actually can just make another guide over there based off that three quarter measurement. So I saved myself a whole half a second without having to take that measurement. And then where it meets here, I'll project back. 
and I'll project that one back as well for this kind of ledge underneath here. I won't bring it all the way though because it does kind of knock into the piece. Okay, so now I've got those little cutout ledges down there and now it's time to add in the curve up here in the top. So in isometrics, circles and curves are shown as ellipses and we use these ellipse templates to do them. So on the ellipse template, we have our different axes that will line up on our object itself in order to kind of center our circles and our curves. So the center point of that curve is two inches in on here. So what I'm gonna do is measure over two and just make a little mark. And I'm just gonna kind of put my z-axis in as well as my y-axis. So I'm just kind of creating the three different axes that the center of that circle is sitting on. Now on your ellipse template as well, they're annotated or marked for what the diameter of it is. So for example, this is an ellipse that has a diameter of one and five eighths. This is one and one eighth one. Um, however, because this shape here has up at the corner is a curve, it's dimensioned with a radius. So it's telling us that this curve has a radius of one. That's what that R1 means. Um, but we need to use the associated diameter. So if it has a radius of one, it would have a diameter of two. So I'm going to take my ellipse template and line up my axes on it. So what I'm doing is making sure that these little tick marks are sitting flush on that line that's representing my x-axis. These lines here are on my y and then my z. So I'm just lining up so that all of those marks sit perfectly on that little kind of center point I found. And then I can just trace around for my curve. And I'll do the same thing on this back edge. I just gotta add in my little vertical guideline, which I didn't do very centered. Is I'm gonna take all of my three axes and just line them up. So I'm just kind of moving it around until all of these little tick mark lines are sitting nicely on there. That means that I have it centered on that point. And I'm just going to trace that out. And then it's another little game of connect the dots. So making sure my T-square is flat against my board. I'll just trace that back. And trace that back. And now I'll go through and erase my guides. So remember, you should be doing your guides very, very light. I don't do my guides very light because otherwise you're not going to see them in a video. But you should be doing your guides very, very, very lightly. Let's see if I can erase them a bit more. So that is how you can add curves to objects for an isometric. So for this one, for our title block, meet all caps. This one is called the support block. And then in the next box, you'll write your name. the date that you drew this, the scale, which we did this one one to one, so one inch on paper is one inch in real life, and this is drawing one of one for this block. 